What's up everybody, Josh Oaks here, and today is officially the day that I give you guys a tour of my conversion van. All right, so this video might get kind of lengthy, so I'm gonna try to go through it as quickly and as thoroughly as possible. So let's just dive right into it and start with the outside. Now, everyone that I ever see do uh, van tours, they typically have a name for their van. Mine is Eleanor. So to kick it off, this is a 2010 Ford Transit Connect XLT. This body style went from 2010 to 2012, I believe. Then they changed it, then it got shorter. And I like the height because it gives me a little more room on the inside. I'm not gonna go into all the details about my tires and things like that because they're just used. Uh, I just got home from a three month trip, home for one week, had to come home for Thanksgiving, and we take off again tomorrow morning. So on the back here is my ladder to get on top of the custom roof rack. Also had to do some custom modifications to the mounts because these doors, they curve over instead of just end like a typical Ford uh, work van, which is what this ladder is designed for. Let's go check out the rack. So up top here, we have my five gallon solar shower. It's been uh, hanging on up here, barely, but it's made it across the country, so I still trust these straps. Then over there, we have the Thule, and inside the Thule, I have like a tent, a uh, sleeping pad, and a bunch of lighting equipment for video work. Then I have my spare tire mounted up in that corner. I explained why I have my tire up there uh, in this video here. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that link out. And then here, normally, I have my two gallon gas can, but I've lost two of them now. One got stolen, then I got a one gallon gas can, and one day it was just gone. I don't know what happened to that one. The reason I know that one got stolen was because I was parked. I wasn't driving, so I didn't lose it down the road. The second gas can may have just fallen off down the road. It's officially time to open the doors and let you guys inside to take a look. We'll start with the front. Um, up here is just a bunch of junk. Um, like I said, I just got back from a trip. Bunch of GoPro stuff, extra windbreaker, um, too much coffee. Just kidding, there's no such thing as too much coffee. My lucky hat, it's not true, it's not lucky, it's just a hat. Now this thing right here, these two, but not as important. This thing is a lifesaver. This is a cell phone mount that I use when I'm driving. It's super convenient because you can put your GPS on there and just let it go. I made a short little USB to lightning cable um, so that I can just plug my phone in. Boop, didn't work. But that way I can listen to music and cruise down the road safely. This is made by a company called Proclip USA, but I do recommend them if you guys are going to be driving a lot because they come in handy and it's a lot safer to have your hands free when you're driving down the road. Then I don't have anything too exciting up in the front bit of the van. Typically my cooler sits here, but I don't have that in the van right now. It's similar to a Yeti cooler, but that normally stays right up in the front seat unless I have a passenger. Then under my seats, stuffed behind my seats, I have my tool belt and somehow, I don't know how, but under the seat is a circular saw because I tried to bring a bunch of tools with me so that if I could get work on the road, I would have the necessary equipment to finish a job. All right, now, right when you open the side door, kind of my front door to the van, you will see there's a little storage cubby here that I made, a couple household plugs. Down under here, I keep uh, more video equipment, um, a couple sandbags, and a bunch of light stands. This bin here in particular, is kind of just some extra storage. It just tips up. Um, this seat is normally tipped forward just a tad, but it tips up. There is some um, detergent, random miscellaneous stuff, some shower flip flops. And also that's where I put my dirty clothes. Moving on to this side. Here is my kind of switch panel type thing. Um, there's two USB plugs there. If I click this switch, it tells me my voltage readout of either battery. I just have to decide which one. This one is wired to my 2000 watt inverter 
that is under this bench. We'll get to that in a second. So instead of having to go into that bench and push the on button, I just ran a wire to this switch. So now I can turn my household plugs on by the flick of a switch. Plugged into my USB ports here. Whoa. Plugged into my USB ports here. I have a little fan clipped up there. Things pretty uh, handy. You can attach it anywhere you want it to be. Uh, and then I just have a phone charger. Now this is not my most proud work because I added this the morning I left. I wanted a little spit sink so if I was brushing my teeth or something I could do it inside the van. It's just a simple little tube that's ran to the bottom of the van. No, there is not a gray water tank. I wish that I had one. I may be adding one in the future because every time I use it, I feel guilty. Then next to that is my switch for my LED lights on the ceiling. It's kind of cool. It has a bunch of different features and functions, dimming and timer capabilities. Uh, and they were only 30 bucks and you got six of them. So a few more things I can do from this side of the van is this is my storage bin that I typically keep my clothes in. Clothes normally go in that bin over there and then tucked over in this corner is usually just like my first aid bin um, and other toiletries like Q-tips. But that thing is super handy. It's huge and you can maybe see way up in that corner I have a foam roller tucked away, a luggage bag way in the back. Usually if I have anything that I gather while I'm on the road, it ends up somewhere in this huge storage bin. Moving on to the back, open these doors up. We'll start with this one. You can see I have a water jug mounted here. Uh, I can just pull that forward if I need to wash my hands or something. You can push it that way. If you hold it up, it gives you running water for a little bit. It's running low on water as you can see, but that thing is always super handy to have. Then I have my fire stopper because it stops fires fast. Better safe than sorry. Under there I have three hooks. Uh, I use that for hanging anything I want. <laughs> Keys, um, hats. This side I have my skateboards. I have my main skateboard and my filming skateboard. Just two simple little hooks. All right, so in the back here we have my Pelican case for my camera gear. And that's just a storage cubby that I use to hold this particular case. Shoved up in the sides over there is a five in one reflector, a little shoe that I use for filming skating so I don't wear out my normal shoes. Way back up in the corner are some tie downs. Always trying to squeeze as much storage as possible out of this thing so every inch counts. On this side we have my video tripod. That's just tucked in the corner, held in by a little strap, my brush, to keep the van nice and clean. Garbage can, obviously. Just use uh, Walmart bags, so that way if I buy groceries or anywhere, it doesn't have to be Walmart. I can reuse the bags for my garbage. If you noticed earlier, I had a speaker by the light switch panel thing. Um, I also have a speaker back here. They are ran to an amp behind the driver's seat, then ran to my head unit in the front of the van. Get some nice tunes while I'm cruising down the road. So let's get inside this thing. All right. Up top is all food storage. It's running low right now because like I said, I am home currently. Usually try to keep the coffee and tea area over there. You can see I have some soup and vegetables and typically it's just dry goods up here. My two burner propane stove stays in place because of this little stopper here. Got my paper towel. That actually doesn't come unrolled as much as you'd think when I'm driving down the road. These. I kind of bent these metal prongs in to keep some uh, pressure on there and it, it's good to go. Got my dishwashing brush up there, a power strip that is ran to the back of that outlet over there and then use that as a jumping point and it's ran to the inverter. So again, when I flip that switch, I have power there. My Bluetooth speaker that has stayed on this counter, never fell off throughout my entire road trip. It's got a rubber bottom. I've actually used it to hold things on the counter, like a box of Kleenex or whatever. I'll wedge it up there. This thing is, uh, you know, multifunctional. Paperweight, tunes, adds a little color. Coffee pot in the corner. That stays in place thanks to that little bungee cord. Then we have the drawers. Now this drawer here holds my pots and pans. Got a cutting board, a magic bullet, a little frying pan, pot couple plates, as much stuff as I can store in there. This drawer is kind of oddly shaped because back in there, this is the back of that switch panel. So I had to kind of notch around that so 
so I didn't uh, mess anything up when it came to the electrical side of the van build. These latches are great because when you push them in, it locks the drawer so it can't come open when you're driving. This side, we have the utensils. Super exciting, I know. Then the junk drawer. Every van's gotta have one. This just has random things. Keep like my lighter for the propane stove, bunch of scissors. That's not true, it's just one pair of scissors, but I have some batteries, plastic bags, couple books, deck of cards. You get the idea. Down here is my water storage. This holds four gallons of water. And then next to it, I have my propane. Behind there, extra plastic bags. This side is more food storage, dry goods as well. Usually keep like cereal and bags of chips, things that are a little bit larger down there. As you can see, I have a big bag of potatoes. These are the little LED lights that come in that kit. Very simple, just three AA batteries. They just clip into the little part that you can screw into the ceiling or they come with a little double-sided tape adhesive thing and they've stayed up there ever since I put them in. But I really love these things because you can just touch it and it turns the light on. So if I had um, hardwired lights into my ceiling, I would only be able to turn the lights on from a switch on this side. When I open the back door and I need to just see something quick, I can just reach up, hit the light and I have light back here. Same thing with opening this side door. I can just reach over and touch this if I need a little bit of light, rather than having to reach all the way in to hit the switch if I wanted light in the back here. Then up top here we have my fantastic fan. I don't remember the model, but it sucks air in and it blows air out, which is huge. It helps tremendously, especially when cooking inside the van. I use my little fan up there. I clip it next to the coffee pot. That blows air across and then I suck air out and it's just whoosh, works great. Down here, I have my little lock box, which I highly recommend to anyone that's living in a van. You should keep a second form of identification in there and or some money to get you home if you, let's say, lose your wallet or for whatever reason, lose your ID. And that way you can at least get into your bank account and access your funds, unless you ran out of money. Moving on to the garage. Now this is the messy side of the van, so Bear with me. Over here, whoa, it's very bright. Over here we have another one of those little storage box bin type things. Um, some more storage under here with some bungee cords, a battery charger for my Makita power tools, skateboard wax, and just random miscellaneous things. This is my battery selector switch that I use to go between the main battery in the van or the auxiliary battery which runs everything in the back. I did a full video about this electrical setup. You can watch it here. Then over here, I have two toolboxes. This one is just full of little hand tools. And back there, I have another toolbox which has the power tools in it. And my pig rails, because life's better when you're board sliding. Shoved in that corner is more bungee cords, a little hatchet, the hose to my uh, solar shower, and I think that's it. You can see some more stuff just wedged up here, but just random things that I might need someday on the road and it doesn't hurt to stuff them over in those corners. Now to let you see what I'm working with when it comes to auxiliary power, just bend the bed up here, tip this bin forward, and in there is my secondary battery, my inverter, and my fuse panel. Again, I went over all this stuff in that video, so if you're interested, take a look at that link. For blocking out light, I use these little roller shades. Um, they're pretty convenient, but those would be the first thing to get redone when I decide to come up with a better way to do it. There's light that leaks through here and it's not completely private, but it's worked for the past three months. Now, I think it's time to show you how the bed works. I can fit here and sleep. I have slept on this all night just as a couch as is. And normally up behind my seat is where my blanket and pillows sit, but I don't have them in there right now. So it's a tad less roomy in here than it looks currently, but they really don't take up too much room. So when I'm in the van, I stay in my little corner over here and I grab in the center. Normally I have two hands to do this, but that's how the bed pulls out. And then this cushion here has Velcro on the back as well. Stuff it all down like that, and that's how the bed works. 
It's very comfy, it gives me a lot more room than one person needs, but I love to sprawl, so it works really well for uh, me. Pretty simple, really. Down here, obviously, you can see this is not painted because wood rubs on wood, and I didn't really want it to stick if I had painted this white. You never see this because, obviously, when I'm sleeping, the door is closed. Same with this one. You only see it when the doors are open and I'm showing people what the van looks like inside. Then, when I want to put it all away, again, I'll go in that corner up there, pull the cushion up, set it into couch mode. You just push the frame back in. Good as new. Got my hardwood floor, gives it a little more of a home style vibe to it, as well as the wood ceiling. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I think I covered all of it. That is going to wrap up my van conversion tour. Hopefully you guys like this video. I really hope I didn't forget anything. If I did, let me know in the comments, especially if you have any questions about how anything works as far as living in the van. I've been posting a lot of videos about tips and tricks. Um, if you guys are interested in that, I posted videos about the entire build on my channel. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.